This video is sponsored by Skillshare. As many of you might know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. They have courses on a multitude of topics such as React, TypeScript, Node.js, and much more. A course that I took and I really liked was the Modern CSS Writing Better, Cleaner, More Scalable Code course by Harry Roberts. CSS is definitely one of my weak points in web development, and this course helped me find a better approach to learning the technology. One of the best aspects of Skillshare is that it is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and learn as many skills as you desire in 2022. The first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description will get a month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, everyone. Like I said, I'm going from um, the simplest mistakes that you can make to a little bit more complicated later on. But the first one I really wanted to point out to you guys is treating states as if they were just normal variables. And um, this is more of a really beginner thing to do, but um, it's something that I feel like all of us went through at least once when we were learning, um, because it's hard to distinguish in the beginning the difference between a state and a variable. And uh, the whole point is a state is only used when you want to um, trigger a re-render of your component when the value of the state changes. So I would imagine a lot of beginners would just uh, come over here and just duplicate and create a bunch of states for each variable they have in their component, which is not the case. An example of needing a state would be something like this, um, where we have a state called count, which is a very common example, and we want to display it in our screen. Now, whenever we change the state, which is this part over here, we want to um, it will change the value, meaning that it, we need to trigger a render to show that new value, which is what we're doing over here. But if you just have a variable that is not really being displayed anywhere or doesn't directly impact what is being displayed on the screen, then you don't need to create a state for it. So making that distinction in the beginning is really important. And I see this mistake being done, especially um, for the last few people that I've been teaching React. Um, I see that this distinction is not really clear in the beginning. So I wanted to include it as the first example. Okay, everyone. So the second state mistake that I see happening a lot is one of the most common ones. And um, I found this example to be really good to really teach this. So I wanted to bring it to you guys, which is I'm trying to update states synchronously. And what I mean by that is, as many of you might know, um, updating states should be done asynchronously, which means that when you try to update the value of a state, such as calling the, the set function for that state, um, the change in the actual state value won't happen immediately. Um, because what happens is um, React will, um, you will call the function, React will finish all of the, the processing, for example, inside of this increase function, if I call set count, um, it will finish the function first. And after all of that, it will check to see if the value currently of the state is different from what it was before. And then it will update the real variable and re-render the component. So it is, doesn't happen immediately. And this is very easily seen in a situation like this, because React batches updates in states. So when I have a function such as this one over here called increase, and we have a count just like the example before, and we're trying to increase this count by clicking on the increase button, you would imagine that since I'm calling the set count function twice, um, it should actually if it starts at zero, set count will now be one. And then on the second one, a count will be one, so it will become two. So since we're calling this twice, it should technically be incrementing by two every time I click on the button. But this is not what happens. As you can see, when I click on the button, it will still only increase by one. And this is the case no matter how many times I just copy and paste this, because no matter what, at the end of the day, uh, until this function increase finishes processing, count will remain the same. It doesn't matter that we set the count to be one over here, counts originally still zero, right? So it will still be the same value. And technically, all of the ones but the last one is obsolete. So never try um, using the new value of a state inside of the same function. Always recognize that it doesn't happen immediately. And this is something that a lot of people have trouble with and um, definitely causes a lot of people to think that they have bugs in their application and that React is just broken. But no, this is just how states work in React. And it makes a lot of sense um, when, you f when you actually understand what's happening. So this is basically it for this example. Okay, so the third mistake that I see happening a lot 
is um, a little bit more advanced, but it's when you start using um, different fetching the libraries to fetch data in React. Um, a great example for this would be using a library such as React Query. And the mistake that I'm talking about is not understanding that the data that we get back from um, th this type of fetching libraries are very commonly um, useful to represent the actual state of the application. So you would ne not necessarily need to create a state to represent this. Actually creating a state would be an anti-pattern because this can be used already as its own state. So what do I mean by that? Obviously, a lot of you guys who don't um, go through this will maybe not, not see the issue with this or maybe not understand what I'm talking about. But basically, what a lot of people do is they get the data from an API request using a library such as React Query and a hook such as the use query hook from React Query. Then they don't understand that this is already technically a state and should be used as a state. When the when this changes, the UI would change as well. So what they might do is do something like this, create a use effect that um, when the data changes like this, so we put the data over here, uh, we'll just create a state down over here to represent this data. For example, in this case, we're fetching data of a dog. So they would create something like dog data and set dog data. And then they would set this equal to use state and create a state to represent the data. However, this is bad because first of all, this is already supposed to be a state, right? It's already supposed to be acting like a state. So coming over here to the use effect and setting the dog data to be equal to the data we get back from the API request is just horrible. And I see this happening a lot. Now I see this happening because I, I get it. Um, we're used to um, when before you start using this kind of library, you're uh, a lot of beginners use, for example, the fetch API and, and or X user or something like that. And they have to set the data they get back from that into a state. However, when you transition to a library like this, you don't have to do that anymore. I personally fell for this when I way when I started using React Query, um, or I don't know if it was React Query or, or um, use SWR, one of the two, um, I was doing something like this. And then I realized that it was just it didn't make any sense. And then I stopped. So I wanted to include this one for those who are doing the same thing. Um, uh, please don't do it because it's it's an anti pattern and you shouldn't be doing this. It would just be creating unnecessary states and it relates to the first thing where I mentioned, um, which is bad, which is creating states when you're not supposed to. Okay, so the fourth mistake that I wanted to point out to you guys is um, the kind of situation where you actually prefer to use the use state hook, but actually should be using the use reducer hook. This kind of situation um, is less common, but I, I've run into this a couple of times, including myself. I've I've been in situations where I was using creating a bunch of states when I realized that if I refactored into using uh, use reducer, um, it would have made my my logic a lot look a lot better and just um, simplify the complexity of, of some sort of logic that I was implementing. So for those who don't know what the use reducer is, um, it's just a replacement for the use state. If you want a more in depth tutorial on this, I do have my all react hooks tutorial, which I go over the use reducer hook. But I'll give a brief overview of a situation where you might want to use the use reducer hook. And an example would be something like this, where you have, for example, a bunch of state related to a user logging into your application, you also have two functions for it. And you have some sort of form that um, interacts with that interact with those um, that data, right? So those states and those functions for this to work, you see, we have a bunch of inputs, and we have two buttons, right? So that includes six different pieces of data that we we are interacting with. And, and in, in a situation that, for example, we, we need that data to be passed down to components, or we need that data to be passed down through a context. Um, this is a lot of them, right? We, this is six different things that we need to we would need to pass down if we wanted to. So what would be a good replacement for this, right? A replacement could have been, for example, implementing this using the use reducer hook. Now, if you look at this file, you'll see it's pretty big, right? It's pretty big. It's a, it's bigger than the other one. But it doesn't mean that it is less it is more complex. Because as you can see, we didn't create a single state, all we have is a single use reducer call with the state variable and a dispatch function. If you if you're familiar with Redux, this is very similar to Redux. Um, 
we have this function called the login reducer. And in here, we can specify all the different actions and th that can occur. For example, if we want to update the, the values of our email username and password based on what the user is typing, all we need is a single field um, case in our reducer, which just specifies um, exactly what we're, we're trying to add, right over here. If you can see, I'll, I'll put this code in the description as well. If you're, or if you're, if you want to take a look at this, because it, it does look a little complicated, but it, it actually simplifies a lot. Because although we're writing a lot um, for all of this, now we don't need to have a, a function for the login, we don't need to have a function for the logout. And we don't need four different states to keep track of this data, we have a single login reducer. And we have a single use reducer call that will handle all of that for us. Now, I'm interested to see um, your opinions on this. I do think that this would be a good situation where, uh, to do something like this, to use the use reducer hook. I would try to keep in mind this kind of stuff when creating your next project, because you might see a situation where using the use reducer will just reduce the complexity of your project. So this is basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Um, they help support the channel. So I'm really grateful for them sponsoring the video. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.